In this video, we will multiply fractions and mix numbers. When we multiply fractions by fractions, we are taking a part of a part. In multiplication, one half times one half is one half of one half. The word of is the clue that we must multiply to find the part we are looking for. We need a common denominator when adding or subtracting fractions. When multiplying or dividing, we don't need to change the fraction to equivalent fractions to equivalent fractions with common denominators. To multiply fractions, first we multiply the numerators of the fractions to get the numerator of the product, then multiply the denominators to get the denominator of the product, and then reduce the product to lowest terms. So one half times one half is one fourth because we multiply the ones to get a one and the twos to get a four, and we can't, do, uh, we can't reduce the, the um, fraction any more than that. Here's an example. One half of one fourth, we'll write that as one half times one fourth. We could use the X or the dot or parentheses, whatever we want. We multiply the numerators, one times one is one. We multiply the denominators, two times four is eight. One half times one fourth is one eighth. Likewise, we've got one third of three fifths. One third times three fifths is one times three is three over three times five is 15. Notice, and then we're going to, to simplify this because three is a factor of both um, three and 15. So this is one fifth. And notice we could have just canceled right there and gotten our one fifth. So as a tip, you can reduce or cancel before multiplying. If you factor the numerators and denominators and match common factors in each and remove them, we, you match common factors in the numerator with common factors in the denominator and remove them. So if you run out of factors, there is a one left behind, not a zero. So here we can look at this, at a couple more problems. They're a little more complicated because we're multiplying three terms now. And we can see what we can do to make this simpler. We've got two thirds, nothing we can do to reduce that. Nothing we can do to reduce any of these, but we can take any of our, um, we can take any um, numbers with multiple factors and break them down. Five is prime, but nine is not. That's three times three, and six, likewise, is two times three. So now I've got a two here and a two up there, and I can get rid of those twos. I have a five left in the numerator, and four threes in the denominator. So three times three times three times three is 81. That's eight, uh, five eighty firsts. For this one, I've got a two, a five. 10 is two times five. 21 is three times seven. And then I'm gonna leave the six as it is because 12 is six times two. So, this allows me to cancel this five, those fives, this two, and this six. That leaves me with a two in the numerator, and three times seven is 21 in the denominator. To multiply mixed numbers, fractions, and whole numbers, first change each mixed or whole number to an improper fraction, and then reduce as much as possible. You multiply the remaining numerators and the remaining denominators, and then write the answer as a whole or mixed number as appropriate. So here we have three times four and a third. So I will first rewrite three as three over one, and four and a third, that's 13 thirds. So I have three over one times 13 over three. I can cancel those threes. I'm left with 13 over one, which is just 13. Next, we have two and a half times five and a third. Well, two and a half is five halves. And five and a third is, let's see, that is 16 thirds. 
Okay, well, I can cancel the 16 is two times eight. So I'll be able to cancel those twos. There's nothing else we can cancel. This becomes 40 thirds. And we can rewrite that as 13 and one third. Again, you are not required to change things from um, improper fractions to mixed numbers. But if you want to do it, it's always good practice. So now we've got a couple of more applied examples. First, we're asked, uh, bedding plants are to be planted three and five eighths inches apart and three and five eighths inches from the end of the planter. What length planter is needed to plant nine plants? So if we want to plant nine plants, That means we need eight spaces between the nine plants and one at each end. So we have 11 times three and five eighths. Okay, so 11 is 11 over one and three and five eighths is 29 eighths. Well, as it happens, both 11 and 29 are prime. So there's nothing for us to cancel here. We wind up with 11 times 29 is, I need a moment here, 200, no, 309. Yeah, I think that's right. Over eight. Um, 304 is divisible by eight but 308 is not, so we can have, we'll know that we've got five eighths here and we just have to divide 304 by eight to figure out exactly how much that is gonna wind up being. It would help if I could find my calculator or my phone, either way. Or I can just do some long division. Eight goes into 36 times. Six times eight is, no, I'm sorry, that should be three times. Three times eight is 24. We subtract and we wind up with 64. So 64 divided by eight is eight. That's 38 and 5 eighths inches. Finally, we're told that bricks are two and a quarter inch thick and they form a brick wall with three eighths inches of mortar joints. What is the height of the wall above the foundation after nine courses? So I start by noting that to do this, I need two, two and a quarter plus three eighths and I'm going to multiply that by nine courses. So two and a quarter is nine quarters plus three eighths, which is to put this in terms of the least common denominator, that's going to be um, 18 eighths plus three eighths is 9 over 1 times 21 over 8. So that's 9 times 21. Really, where the heck did my calculator go? That's 189 over 8. 184 is divisible by 8. It goes into 18 twice, two times eight is 16, 24, that's three, 23 and five eighths. It's gonna be 23 and five eighths inches high. 